You're listening to the Celtic Coach Radio Show, an Irish talk show for men where science, spirituality, and self-discovery meet. We have got a wonderful guest uh, coming on the show, and we're dedicating this show today to all the ladies that are listening. From I got there's ladies from Ireland, I know Europe, they're from all over the place. Australia, I think we got some 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 ladies listening in. So welcome to you all, and I do appreciate you checking in with the show. This is the Celtic Coach Radio Show. We're here every Friday from 1 to 3 on kws.fm and you can check out my website at the celticcoach.com if you want to pick up a copy of our show today. All right, our next guest, affectionately known as the Love Doctor. He's a professional speaker, he's a best-selling author and relationship attraction expert. I just think that sounds really cool and I'm looking forward to hearing what exactly that is. He also has a master's uh, degree in spiritual psychology. He's been a spiritual counselor for well over 16 years and beyond. I'm going to have to check in because I think it's much, much longer. His passion now this is this impresses me I have to say because I think there's very few men that are doing the work that Barry is doing. His passion is to empower successful single women to embrace and to own their authentic feminine power and attract the best in their men or in their women. Because we're not biased on this show. Uh, if you want to hear more about our guest today, you can go to barryselby.com, S-E-L-B-Y. Without further ado, let's uh, let's bring Barry on the show here. Barry, can you hear us? I can hear you loud and clear. All right, I'm just going to hang up the <laughs> phone here. And uh, you are uh, you heard me loud and clear. We're hearing you loud and clear. Barry, uh, welcome to the yes. show, sir. Thank you for having me. I appreciate the invitation. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. I think it's... Uh, I was just saying, we were, we were talking a bit on the phone there before... Uh, before we started, but uh, I met you back in 2002. I moved to L.A. in, in 2000, and my life fell apart. And uh, as a result, um, I started doing a lot of self-development work. And then, of course, I started you know, meeting people and attracting people into my life that were in the same work. And I remember we met at the Novel Cafe. We were just, we were just reminiscing about the Novel Cafe. <laughs> yes, um, indeed. Yeah, back in 2002, and you'd, I know you were, you were doing this work, uh, then, but I didn't realize, you know, just how passionate and, and, and how, um, you know, how much you were invested into us. Tell us a little bit, Barry, about, cause I have to tell you, Barry, I, I find this fascinating, mate. And, um, <laughs> now I, it's I kind of why. laughable <laughs> too, though, Barry, that an Irishman and an Englishman are talking about empowering women <laughs> mm-hmm. exactly <laughs> that's uh that might be the joke for today barry i'm not sure but tell us a little bit about barry like what what is when you, when you say to people uh, i'm a relationship attraction expert i mean is that what you tell people or you know do you do you how do you explain that to people um that's the way i explain it simply because when i say that if someone says well are you a coach i'm like i hate using that term because a coach is so limiting as a term hmm and what I'm really about is helping women attract the best in their lives. And you say it's funny, it's like it should be the joke that the Irishman and Englishman are talking about helping women. But for me, it's, it's I don't want to say it's serious business, but it's definitely passionate business. And it's my love. So I've been in this world for a while. And truth be told, it really comes out of, I'll say probably my relationship with my mother, because she was the, she was the, the heart of my family. And so I always had a deep respect and reverence for her and the family, because, you know, my brother and my dad and myself were all the men in the family. And she held it together for us. But also in my teen years at high school, back in England, um, being bullied because I wasn't, I wasn't the, the gung-ho macho man at school. And I got bullied. I didn't, and I turned the other cheek and got beaten up again. So hmm. what happened was in high school, I was really found safety and friendship around the girls at school. And in fact, became their confidant for so many times when they wanted to find someone they could trust. And they'd come up to me and cry on my shoulder because they had a breakup or something. And I had no skills. But I had a strong shoulder, so I used to be their go-to support system. Yeah. So even at that early age, Barry, you were, you were, you were kind of being molded for this work. Yes, and I had no idea that was going to happen because yeah. <laughs> I didn't know until you know decades later that it was the work I should be doing. I've always found it's been my gift, I would say, or my service throughout my adult life. But I never either thought about it or even considered it something I would do as a business. It was just something I did as a friendship as a service to my friends because I cared about them so much. Mm. Yeah. 
I, uh, well, I, I, you know, it's not like you'd wake up one morning and say, you know what, I think I'm going to be a relationship attraction expert. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah, isn't it funny how the universe molds us, Barry, and, and we don't even, we don't recognize or understand what's going on until we kind of look back. Exactly, yeah, 2020 20 wow. hindsight, watching, watching the way that I would call, I mean, my personal way of calling these things, spirit versus God or whatever, and I say I look back and see how spirit was, masterfully moving the moving the chess pieces around so i know that i'm in the right place yeah and and you've been uh, because i know i remember i took a, a course back at agape spiritual center in la back mm -hmm. in i don't know 2001 maybe and you were already doing a lot of trainings and stuff because you were one of the primary teachers there how long have you been you, you're the spiritual director at agape right Oh, well, I was a ministry director, yes, yeah. but that was a while ago. I mean, I let go of that a while back because I was moving into other things. Oh, you did, yeah. But I, yeah, but I've been, I was licensed as a practitioner in 2000 when I first became a spiritual counselor, um, leader in a sense. Was in 2000, right before, when we moved into the new building. So 17, almost 18 years now. Yeah. What, uh, what's the, what's the most fun part of your job, Barry? I think the most, re I would say rewarding first, and not sure about the fun, but the most yeah. rewarding part for me is really seeing women heal from past um, pain, hurt, and broken heart experiences because so many of my clients are women who, and it's funny, I, I posted this morning on Facebook, that it's, it's interesting how when a couple breaks up, and it's not necessarily for women, but and when a couple breaks up, it's the loyal one who actually does the inner work and goes and finds support and help to heal whatever's in the way to move the next relationship. It's the one that cheated or lied or did the damage that bounces into the next relationship almost immediately. And the truth is, general, and this is very general, generally speaking, if the men tend to rebound into more relationships and move on to other women, it's the women that tend to lick their wounds and do some work internally. And that's seeing them in that pain and then moving to a place of wholeness is so rewarding for me. It's such a healing place for myself to feel that I've served and made a difference in the world. Yeah. So generally, you find that Barry that that women will tend more to say, "Okay, what's going on here? I, I I might need to look at myself." Whereas, where the men generally will say, "You know, uh, I'm going to look elsewhere." Well, it, it's is that a general? Because I don't want to. I don't want to. Yeah, it's like hard to do percentages. You know, it's to, it's or get emails. It's you know, analysis. <laughs> <laughs> the, the, yeah, the journey, frankly, is that the majority of people, period, don't do any work. Yeah. So within that generality, there are some men, but more women, proportionally, who do seek outside support, whether it's books, seminars, teachings, coaching, whatever it is, to figure out what's not lining up so they can get what they really want. Um, in most of the world, frankly, women and men just go, well, that one's screwed up. I'll go to the next one and see what happens, which mm -hmm. is not usually the way that works. Yeah, yeah. Barry, I, I, got a, I got a very scientific, technical question for you. Why, why, why is it, Barry... <laughs> Why is it, Barry, that, that I was just thinking of this this morning? Why is it that my uh, my uh, little lady, that's my cute name for her, why is it mm -hmm. my little lady tells me she's got a closet full of clothes, Barry, but she says she has nothing to wear? Could, could, you, could you shine any <laughs> light on that? Because I have no idea what that is. And I, and I say, you know, sweetie, let's, uh, let's throw out a bunch of those clothes. And, and, and I'll be like, well, throw out what? I'm like, well, you know, we're close. What, what, what's all? Do you have, do you have any insights on that, Barry? <laughs> I think I can give you some support. Yes. I mean, right. The truth is, I'm not going to, I'm not going to give you an answer you like, but I'll give you some truth. That'd be even um, better. <laughs> so let me, let me just give you a little breakdown of how something's unique about women that men don't understand. Um, for example, when you, we men, if you look at a rainbow, you see basically the primary colors of the rainbow. So it's like red, green, blue, you know, indigo, et cetera, et cetera. When women look at a rainbow, they see every single nuance and tint and transformation change between those colors. Meaning, for example, that if you go in the closet, most men have maybe one or two pairs of black shoes. But women have 17 pairs because it's not just the color, it's the subtleties, the, fact, the different height of the heels, the openness of the toe, the shape of the shoe, the finish on top, if it's laced or not laced, that sort of thing. Uh -huh. And same with clothes. So for yeah. women, it's a nuance and it's a much wider spectrum. I remember one of my teachers telling me that a woman who's in a feminine, her day will be influenced by the weight of her earrings. And I was like, what? And it was explained to me, and I really got it after they told me. 
is that women basically have to feel into what they're going to wear. It's almost more like how they feel to wear it more than the color. Yeah. But the color gives them a feeling response. So for most women, by putting on something yellow versus something that may be cream, very subtle difference perhaps, is a total influence on how the day is going to go. So they need to have that variety. I'm not saying it gives women the right to go spend tons of money on clothes. However, many women do. So when she tells you she doesn't have anything to wear, what she's really, I would say, saying to you is, she has nothing to wear in the closet that matches her mood. And that's the truth. Yeah. Why, why do you think, Barry, is, is, is that, uh, you know, when, and I'm generalizing here, but why is it when women get mm-hmm. stressed, they go shopping and, and men, you know, invade countries? Sorry, so that, again, when we get upset. Why is it when women get stressed, stressed, oh, stressed. That, they, that they go shopping and, and men, when they get stressed, they invade countries? Well, not all men invade countries, but I understand the point you're making. Um, for men, basically, hang on one second. I just, just heard a leaf blower going off. Noise in the background. Ah, um, that thing called life, Barry. Don't you just... <laughs> that's in the way. It happens around us. It yep. gets in the way. So, yeah, and I'm making women, a joke, but I'm also making a point, yeah. you know, of what, what, what do women do when they do get stressed as opposed to the difference Well, the thing is, is the question about what happens in the stress, because yeah. what stress is to men is different from what stress is to women. And for men, what stresses us tenderly makes us react and become more uh, infuriated. Mm-hmm. I wouldn't say necessarily angry, but we tend to, a lot of men tend to become reactive because we men have to defend ourselves. We men have to be winners. So when something challenges us, which puts us under stress, our innate desire is to overcome whatever it is. So we will react or respond to a perceived threat. So if something that's stressing us is threatening our peace and quiet and threatening our ability to be at one with ourselves. So we will then tend to overcome it and dominate it to stop it from stressing us. Now, for a lot of men, that means that instead of doing that, going to invade a country, we would go and drive the car too fast on the freeway or we would go hiking and, you know, take a gun out and shoot some trees or something. Yeah, we yeah, might do something like wood, that. Yeah. yeah. Whereas for women, it's more about doing something that calms them down. And the thing is for for men and women, now, again, generality, I'm sort of using masculine and feminine uh, descriptions, overlaying men and women, but the truth is masculine and feminine is in all of us. And some women are more masculine, some men are more feminine. It's just that I'm using the terminology fairly generically. So for women, when stress happens, it's serving their ability to be centered. And for the feminine, the way to get back to center is to do some sort of meditative practice. Now, meditation that we think of traditionally is sitting still. So that is actually a masculine practice because stillness is masculine energy. Movement is feminine energy. So for women, meditation could be yoga, could be dancing, yeah. and it can be shopping. Yeah, so when women go out and do things like that, it brings them back to a place of centeredness. Well, that is very interesting. Well, uh, well, it it lends itself to Barry. Uh, you know something that I read about. You know, when when women come home from work, they want to talk about their day because they want to. In talking about their day, they release that oxytocin, that nurturing, yes. that you know, feeling loved chemical. Where whereas men, you know, for us it's testosterone, and 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 the way we actually refuel that is by just sitting down and and basically, you know, doing nothing. Yeah. The best thing is for men is to, like, have a beer and a TV for, and watch TV for half an hour to get back to center. That works. Yeah, absolutely true. And the feminine, it isn't about the energy of movement. It's, again, the feminine energy of movement is what brings them back to center. So talk out the day to share what happens, to share the news. Part of it is this ability to release and come back to centeredness. There's a um, – one of my teachers is Alison Armstrong. And she. Oh, um, yeah. I just had her on the show here a few weeks ago. Oh, you did? Very interesting lady, yeah. Yeah, I was with her in January last year at the um, uh, PAX World Tour. She talks about this thing called the berry report, as in like fruits. Hmm. Because what the feminine does, and she talks about this the way that the masculine, just to give you a little, uh, a further viewpoint, is the masculine is the hunter. So we are, as men, more myopic and single focus, one of our skills. Is that long range laser telephoto lens in our eyes to see things long distance and go for them. The goal setting, hunting a target, that's kind of the maximum mm, way. Future thinking, yeah. The, right. The feminine has like a wide angle lens. You can see more diverse arenas. And because the feminine back in the olden days, whilst the men were out hunting, the women would be like mapping the land, seeing where everything is. They'd also protect the village and all the kids. 
they'll also be working for predators, and they'll be collecting the fruit and the various um, bits of produce to feed the families when they come home. So when they come back, they want to give a berry report, which was really, in the way that Alison calls it, is letting everybody else in the village know, including the men, where the safe vegetables were and where the poison ones were, where the predators were not and where it was safe to go. That was kind of the very important. So what are women were trained to do, or should say the feminists trained to do in medieval times, or in ancient times rather, is they would lay, provide the lay of the land through verbal discourse. They would share what was going on around the world. But the masculine were like, I'm the target, come back, and like, we're done. <laughs> so we didn't have much to talk about it. We, the, our um, victory will be shown by the fruits of our labor, which be the dead carcass in front of the family. So we didn't have as much to talk about. It was our deeds that showed our victory versus our words. What do you, what do you think, Barry? Makes a, uh, what makes a whole woman? Like you, you talked a little oh, bit boy. earlier about Ooh. you know, <laughs> you know the pain and the hurt, and then doing the work. Yeah. I mean, what do you, what, what do you, what do you, when you talk to women, what, what would be your description of a successful, mature whole woman? The biggest piece, I would say, of all of it is when a woman loves and trusts herself. There's a whole old-fashioned paradigm about, you know, when you find the right man, you'll be fine. It's like, no, that's not the case. The truth that we've been trained for millennia, especially for the last, well, the last hundred years, with all the love songs and movies and books and stories, is that we're all 50-50 relationships. Like, we, we, we would be complete with somebody else. And the codependent model that we've been raised on still is pervasive in society. So we think about if you leave, I'll die, or, or, you know, you won't be anything without me, all these crappy songs that told us that we weren't whole on our own. <laughs> yeah. Because they, they did. Come There's on. such a lie. It's just rubbish. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, 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 but the <laughs> ladies, they like, to, they like to fantasize about those songs a little more than the men do. Perhaps they do, but that's also, that's also the marketing. Yeah. Because women need to know just as much as men do, because both of the genders need to know that we are full, whole and complete as we are. We don't need anything else or anybody else to be whole. So when we have a relationship, it's added to who we are, not filling some vague piece missing gap or hole we think we have inside of us, because there is no hole. Yeah. So when a lot of my work with my clients, truthfully, for their relationship attraction focus is to start by making them whole first. So they're coming to look for a relationship as an additive bonus versus a lacking experience. Because yeah. no, let me be clear, and men know this, I'm sure. When they're, when, when they're, well, actually, it works both ways. When, when someone comes up to you who's very needy and wanting something that, that makes them feel better because they're not complete themselves, it's very unattractive. And some people think it's the only way to get relationships, so it's counterproductive. Yeah, no, that makes total sense. And, and what I hear in that, Barry, too, is I remember, uh, I, remember, I remember reading this quote. I'm not sure if it was a quote or just a statement, but, but where the son goes up to the father and he says, hey, how do I, uh, how do I find the... How do I find the right woman? And the father says, hey, forget about finding the right woman. Become the right man. Yes. And that's kind of Absolutely. what you're talking about. Yeah. yeah. How, do you, how do you work with women, Barry? I mean, how do you work with women to, to connect to that part of themselves that's, that's already there, that wholeness within? Well, the, the, the way I mostly work with women, and this is more sort of the counseling mode in a way, but it's not just counseling, is first of all is to... Um, and not understand as much as you get to find what it is that they've been telling themselves or have been told over years that has them feel like they're incomplete. So part of it is the wounding from past relationships and part of it is their upbringing. And those two components for most, and, and again, I'm talking about women in this aspect, but men have it too, but it's just more, more well hidden for men. For women, it's the stories they've been told by their families, by the abuse they receive from family members or parents, all past relationships where they were hurt, wounded, or otherwise denied the love they surely deserve. And so they've been telling themselves lies from that because they've been telling themselves they weren't whole, they weren't good enough, they don't deserve it. And they get in this limiting cycle that's not true. So my work a lot of times is to help them remove the lies because none of this is true. And when they've come to the back to the truth of who they are, they start to shine brightly, they start to own their truth, they become whole again, and they're at peace and, and joy in their own heart. Mm. Mm, very nice, Barry. You, um, uh, I know you wrote a book, Barry. Um, mm -hmm. 
uh, uh, 50 Ways to Love Your Lover. What, yes, uh, if, if you were to take like at least, uh, and 50 is uh, 50 is quite a few, but if you were to take three from that 50, <laughs> <laughs> no pressure, right. men, 50, it's, it, 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 you could do it. It's not in a whole weekend, Barry, right? You could do it over time. As, as, <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh, Indeed. What, would, what would you say are like, like the top three to five, Barry, ways that, that, uh, now it, it, it's written, is it written for women? To love their men or for men to love their women or both? It's written for both and for singles and for couples. The book's yeah. principles that stand on their own. Some of them are about when you're in a relationship, some are when you're a single, some are for women to understand how to attract and how to be themselves, some for men, how to be in the masculine. It's a blend. And also, frankly, two, at least two thirds of the book is going to apply to couples regardless of whether they're straight or gay too, so it's inclusive. Mm. Well, give, give us a few ways. Share a few ways in the book, Barry. Sure. Um, one of them, I think, which one should I choose off the top of my head? Do you memorize um, the whole 50 of them, Barry, you have? <laughs> not really. <laughs> no, I've actually memorized a bunch from a couple of other teachers' books that I studied and read, read more, to be honest. To, to be totally transparent, I don't have my book memorized, although I can get to my book in, if I wanted to go, go dig out the desk. Um, I would say, frankly, that the, 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 which I'm, I'm just randomly scanning through my head, which is the best three to choose. Um, let's pick three randomly. So one of them is, I think about relationship as being a spiritual practice. That for some people, relationship is just a convenience to be in. But I think the truth is, if you're really in a deep, passionate, monogamous relationship, you can have an incredible journey of transformation, of healing, of wholeness, of spiritual enlightenment being in partnership. But it requires commitment to the work and to really, really focus on the growth you can have together. And it requires both partners to be involved. That's one of them. Um... Oh, yes. The other, and on that similar vein, similar note, is that it took about, um, I'm not sure what, it, I can't remember what the title of the chapter is, but it talks about relationships, or I should say the uh, rubber band experience in relationships. And I don't mean it as rebound, that's a whole other conversation. But for many people, when you get into a relationship, there's a, and you can imagine, you can imagine two, um, two sticks with a rubber band talk between them. So you can get the idea of two, that's the two partners with attention in the relationship. It's not, not, not extremely tight, but it is attention. Those two are in balance together whilst there's slight tension on that rubber band. But what happens in life, because it happens to us, is that something happens where we'll grow. Maybe through trauma, maybe through expansion, maybe through questioning for finding out the truth of life, whatever that is. But one of the partners will tend to grow because of that. And they put tension on the relationship because that first partner is now growing beyond the relationship and it's stretching the rubber band taut. When that happens, one of three things can be the result of that. The first thing is the second partner who sees the first partner changing gets so excited for the partner to say, I want to come with you. I want to learn what you've learned. I want to become more myself as well. And they'll move closer, which will take the pressure off the rubber band and create the relationship closer. Second option is for some people, this is rare, but it happens. The person who's grown or changed will look back at their relationship and realize how important the relationship is to them. And rather than have the relationship change, we'll go back to the way it was. Again, removing the pressure and tension on that rubber band and go back to neutral again. The third option, which is more likely to happen above all, but not people will necessarily admit to this or understand this is what happened, is that when the person who's grown so much has grown to the point where they can no longer stay, and the person who is not willing to grow, the one left behind, decides they've had enough, they can't do it, rubber band breaks, the relationship ends. And for many people... Their relationships end because one person has grown apart from the other, not grown apart necessarily, but grown more whole or grown on their part. And it's, I can say, it's not one of the things I would say most people admit. For many people looking back, they realize they've grown out of the past relationship. They started when they were in their 20s, and in the 40s, they're a whole different person. They're no longer in that relationship because the person who they're with didn't change. So that's, that's number two. Um, boy. <laughs> number three. One of those, I guess, I mean, I did talk about it briefly earlier, is the understanding of the dance of polarity. And I can go in a bit deeper this one. This is, yeah, this is the yeah, talk a little bit about that, because that was one of the questions that I had. You know, talk about yeah. this, this dance of polarity between the feminine and the masculine. It's a wonderful dance. <laughs> is, is it a two-step, Barry, a three-step? Before what, what, what kind of a dance are we talking here, Barry? <laughs> Give us a visual. It, it depends. It, it's, it's the agreement between the couples. So you have to decide what you want to dance. It's not going to be surprise because if one of you comes in a two-step one comes a three-step it won't work yeah yeah which does happen <laughs> so, yes the, the dance of polarity as i call it is the best way of describing it is recognizing 
And then you can go back and look, so, you know, go back and look at John Gray and the Mars and Venus book. It's that sort of understanding the difference in polarity is so extreme that even though we are in the same human race, the differences are unique and wonderful, which is creates the magnetic attraction. Um, if you look at magnets, physical magnets, if you put a North Pole against a North Pole, they repel each other. If you put a North Pole against a South Pole, they're very attracted to each other. They'll, they'll come together very fast and very clearly. That's the same thing for masculine and feminine polarity is what creates the attraction. Now, in order to go any further, I have to understand that this is true for straight and gay relationships. So it's not about gender. It's about polarity. Mm. So there are yeah, that's a good distinct, masculine clear and feminine distinction. partners. Say again? That's a very clear distinction, Barry, yeah. Yeah, I want to make sure because some people go, well, masculine is men and feminine is women. It's like, not necessarily because in some yeah. cases, I did my relationships in the way that way in the past. I did women who were more masculine than I was, and I was in my feminine. So it's not based on gender necessarily. Mm-hmm. I've since dug deep and found out my true nature and they've gone back to the masculine. But in gay relationships, the polarity is one partner's going to be more masculine centric, one's going to be more feminine centric, whether it's male or female partners. And the polarity is what creates the attraction. It's really what, what fuels the chemistry. Because chemistry tends to fade if you don't understand this, and so it doesn't last forever. And what happens is it's the polarity that creates this magnetic pull, like two magnets. The challenge with that is that when you get into a relationship with your partner and you spend all your time with them, especially, especially if you live and work together and you raise family together, you spend so much time together, the magnetism starts to fade. Like putting magnets in a drawer together, over time the magnetic field dissipates and it becomes just two bars of metal. In a relationship, if you spend all your time together, you're, you become best friends and no longer have that passion, that love, and that chemistry. The good news is you can recharge the batteries. You can restore the magnetism. So like magnets in a drawer, you can take them out, put them back with magnets again, and recharge their magnetic pull. In your human, in your human experience as men and women, if women do feminine practices to restore their femininity, they go to the spa with their girlfriends once a week, or they go out and do shopping trips with their friends, or they go to women's retreat and hang out with other women and get to remember the sisterhood. Those things will restore the femininity. For men, if we go hiking on our own and we go out to the mountains or we go camping somewhere, or if we go play sports with our buddies and with the guys and go like pound the, pound the field and do stuff like that, or if we go um, any competitive sports for men really help because it's that competitive edge that puts us back in our masculine. So the batteries are rechargeable, which is, the, which is the polarity is rechargeable for men and women. And it's probably one of the secrets to a long, healthy sexual relationship with your partner. Um, we think there's anything else on that. Yeah. The other thing about masculine and feminine is like the yin and yang. We are opposites. So where the feminine energy is the light and the life and the beauty of movement and everything happening, the power of the masculine is in stillness and it's in the depth of darkness. Our true nature, not in, not in evil darkness, but it's the void of anything. So we can have this spaciousness in us that is so solid and so grounded that a woman can implicitly trust us because we know we have, we hope we have, we're there for her. And so we have this solidity that won't flip around. And so for men, when we're not in a grounded state, Women will not tend to trust us because we don't have the stability to hold the space for them to vent, to release, to anything. And Alison, again, as far as Armstrong, talks about how the truth is that a true masculine man can stand in the midst of his, his partner's storm of emotional expression and won't run away. Mm. Where, where, where most men, there's a little voice in their head saying, Run, Forrest, run! <laughs> Yeah, I've had that little voice uh, shout in my ear a few times. Barry, talk to me. Let's stay on this topic here of polarity because I'm Mm -hmm. really enjoying it, and I'm sure the listeners are are too. And this show today is dedicated to all the ladies out there. Um, I'm Mm going to talk. I want to talk to you a little bit more about the polarity in terms of why is it women? And we're going to take a break here and come back, and you can answer this one. But why is it that women? Uh, and again, generalizing successful women, or what has your experience been with women who are quite successful in business when they start to move or tend to own more of that uh, masculine energy as opposed to feminine energy? So let's uh, we'll talk a little bit about that when you come back. 
Uh, stay stay on the phone, Barry. We'll be right back. All right, everyone. Okay. We're going to do a little, uh, a little uh, station ID here. If you've just joined us, welcome. You're listening to the Celtic Coach Radio Show, an Irish talk show for men where science, spirituality, and self-discovery meet. We're talking with Mr. Barry Selby today, relationship attraction uh, expert, all the way from Los Angeles, California. And uh, if you want to know more about Barry, you can go to Barry Selby at dot com s e l b y and if you want to know more about the show we're here every friday celtic coach radio show from one to three on kows lp 92.5 fm if you're in your car kows.fm if you are listening through the wonderful and wacky World Wide web um Online. Uh, more information about this. You want to get a copy of today's show? You can go to theCelticCoach.com. All right, we're back. We're talking with a relationship attraction expert, a man of man of many talents, known affectionately <laughs> to a lot of his friends as the Love Doctor. Barry, uh, yes, yeah, share a little bit about because uh, you work with successful women, and uh, what's what's your uh, experience with women who who tend to lean more on the um, on the masculine side, and and what does that do to a relationship? Well, this is yeah. This is let's unpack this one. This is one of the deeper parts. All right, let's um, go deep, Barry. Let's go deep. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's start with the framework first, which is the the business world is designed for men. Period. It was started by men, designed for men. Yeah, and that's and not in yeah, the and that's just a fact. That's not like a, yeah. a, an opinion. That is just a fact. If you look out onto all the buildings and 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 pretty much everything that's standing with blocks and bricks and wood built by men, and because that was the way it was built, that's where it yeah. started. Because the society, and this is not to say. I mean, let me say it this way: the world has been generally run by men because men wanted to control everything. And the feminine's been, to be totally honest, transparent, and maybe subversive, you say that the feminine's been suppressed and written out of a lot of history. So even going back to the Bible, there's stories about the feminine leadership that was actually taken out of the Bible. I've done some research. So hmm. that's a whole other conversation. It'd be really, um, I would say be a heretic, but it's, <laughs> we can be out of that one. Yeah, yeah, we don't want to get, we don't want to get, uh, what is it, tarred and feather, Barry, on the, on the first show. <laughs> I'll have you back again. Yeah. We'll talk about that one, Barry, when it's safer. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes, definitely. So the business world, as it works, very much is in a masculine way. It's built for competition, about winning, losing, about goal setting, getting the target, making it happen, which is all my, more masculine mindset tools. Women in the 60s, particularly, when the sexual revolution happened, a lot of women suddenly, or well, suddenly, over a period of years, became clear they wanted to go work on their own, be independent, to do what they wanted to do. A lot of women joined the workforce to copy what the men were doing because the men had already paved the way because up until really the 50s, most women had not worked before. They were staying at home, didn't have a bank account, didn't have a, didn't have a car, didn't have an apartment. They were courted by the man coming to the parents' house to take them out. And when they got married, they moved to his house, so the house they bought together. So in the 60s, when the Second Revolution happened, women discovered or owned or claimed or took their space up to say, we want to go out and work and have our independence. So women went to work in the business world and basically started copying the men. Women burned their bras, they cut their hair, they put on suits and went to work. Is the model that was taught in the 60s. Nowadays, women still do that in large ways. There are some women who are very much in the feminine entrepreneurship, but in the corporate structure of the world, most women are either treated like, um, well, this is changing now thanks to the Me Too and, and Time's Up conversation, and it's like nothing but just pretty flowers in the corner being sexy is what the men ran the show. The women in business tended to copy the men and became very orderly, very straightforward, systematic, and goal-oriented. So what happens in relationships is this messes everything up. I dated women like this, so I know how painful it is to be on the receiving end. But what happens is that when men and women are both in their masculine, like with the magnets, it doesn't attract to each other. So the idea of being together was actually forced more than natural, and women were as much the hunters as the men were. So the men were no longer having to like look to find somewhere. They were just like in the dating apps. Women can swipe as much as men can in the smartphone dating apps. It's become an even playing field, but it's not healthy because women aren't in the feminine in doing it. They're actually being like the men. And so in relationships, men would either battle with the, sorry, the masculine, and the men would either battle with the masculine and the feminine, and nobody would win, or which is what I did. I became the nice guy and I actually became secondary to the women because I wanted to make sure they were okay. So I moved into my feminine to support their masculine, which is mm -hmm. reversed. It wasn't mm -hmm. healthy. The sex mm -hmm. was still good, 
but it wasn't healthy because I wasn't in my true nature. It wasn't always she. And so for a lot of women out there, being a masculine at work is finding ways to reconnect their family when they come home. And one of those things I talked about on one of my broadcasts um, a while back was for women in relationship, the best way if they're in business of how to come back to their family at home is their boyfriend, their husband, their partner, the wise one. When, they, when, his, when his woman comes home from work, he makes sure when she walks in the door that there's a hot bath with candles and a glass of wine ready to go. But when she walks in, he takes her keys, her phone, and her bag from her, leads her to the bathroom and says, go in there, take care of yourself, I'll see you in half an hour. And she can restore to her feminine. Uh, I'm, so I'm writing this down, Barry, by the way. <laughs> Good. Keep going, keep going. <laughs> it's okay, what, you listen to the replay. <laughs> <laughs> but it's one of those fundamental things is that what happens is that we men can take a responsible action to help our women remember the feminine. Mm. And it's something that we forgot. Mm. We don't bother doing because we're so busy getting things done and making it happen. But that extra level of care will make will return dividends in your relationships. Barry, all the women listening out there, there's <laughs> there's huge smiles across the planet right now, Barry. I, I think I, if you I were know, to put yourself I, out there, Barry, you'd have about 100 women, maybe more, that just want to <laughs> give you a big hug and say, thank you. <laughs> Uh, I've had women do that to me, so I know. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I'm sure. And, and and let's be honest, I learned from one of my teachers. I'm not claiming I made this up. I didn't. I learned from teachers, and I saw it demonstrated, and I saw so powerfully this works. So I know from experience how powerful this is. So I'm glad I can share it. Yeah. Well, you've also made your own mistakes, Barry, which is, I think, even more Ooh. important in relationships <laughs> yeah. than what we read in books. I think it's what we learn yeah. through our relationships. You know, it's one of the it's what it's one of the beautiful things, Barry, that I think relationships offer people, men and women, is that when and I speak from a man now, from from a, um, from a, from a man's point of view, um, mm-hmm. allowing myself to be the man in the relationship and allowing the woman to be the woman in the relationship. That to me sounds like something that it's kind of obvious, Barry, but, but not Would that, was that be fair mm-hmm. to say? Yeah. Yeah. That's the mistake. And, and again, from an experience of my own mistakes in relationships, absolutely was the case that I would get or not remember to claim my masculine part, my male place in the relationship. And I ended up becoming secondary and become the beta male. And it was a mistake I made that I will never do again. But I also clearly know that I'm the only one who did that because women, the thing about women, and this is the one thing that women don't realize because they haven't been told this before, is that the feminine energy is thousands of times more powerful than the masculine energy. Realizing that the feminine energy is life itself, the power that women have at their fingertips that's in their DNA, that's in their goddess energy, is so much more powerful than they've been told or even realized that if they set into their masculine to push us, to push into us, they can dominate us too. The power we have being in the masculine is we hold enough space enough big enough for that to flow. There's one of my analogies that one of my teachers said is that the feminine is like one of, is a powerful river running through the mountains and down into the, in the lowland. The masculine is the river banks. So we we provide structure and safety and containment for the river. However, the river can burst the banks at any time. And the women need to realize their feminine power is that powerful that even though we masculine create the space for them, they are not controlled by us, and they forget that. Hmm. What? Uh, what? Uh, I, I use the word advice, but what? What suggestions, Barry, would you give to the ladies out there when? When let's say they, I call it an emotional hijacking. When when their emotions have kind of taken over, and mm-hmm. the man is standing there wondering. Okay, the storm's about to come now. I, I know I'm supposed to stand here and weather it, but everything in my body is saying, run! <laughs> what, uh, what, uh, what suggestions would you give to the ladies when they feel like, hey, they've just been, they've been overtaken by their emotions? It's not, you know, honey, is, is there anything wrong? Yes, everything's wrong! What, uh, right. what, what's the job of the feminine in, in, in that particular case or in that kind of scenario? Well, the, the first thing is that the feminine in that role is, is, is that if that happens, you've got to get it out. You've got to release it. You've got to be clear of it. It's, it's toxic otherwise. But if you can, with, a, with the, last, <laughs> the last moments of consciousness before you dive into the emotional <laughs> yeah. um, hailstorm, is tell, you, tell, your man, um, tell your man three things. One is 
please stay here, I need you. The second one is, it's not about you. And the third one is, please don't try to fix it. Mm. You do those three things, he can relax, he's not trying to find a solution. He doesn't have to run away because it's not about him. And two, he feels needed and he'll stay there. Yeah, I, 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 I don't think you could ever say that enough, Barry, to the man. Hey, don't try to fix it. <laughs> Just stand there and it's, it's, listen. It's we, we have a tool belt built in. We want to fix everything. Of course we do. Instinct as men. <laughs> yeah, of course we do. And, and, and they're not looking for us to, to, to fix this, Barry. They're just looking for us to, to hold the space. Right. For them, them to have their, their, their moment or whatever it might be and then, and then move on. Because Let's, the thing uh, is, when women, it's, when women build up this accumulation, nine times out of ten, it's all just the commission of emotional stuff they hadn't been able to release and they basically need to get it out to be clear and to be mm -hmm. healthy again. And frankly, to be a whole, lot, a whole lot more loving as well. Well, and men need the same, Barry, in terms of like, you know, we tend to hold in our emotions where, where the women, right. bless them, they, they allow themselves to express them, where men, we, we tend to, generalizing, of course, no tar and feathering, please, no emailing me. If you want to email me and complain, you can email me at the blah, 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 gmail.com. <laughs> Right. Um, let's uh, let's switch gears a little bit, Barry, because I, I was listening mm -hmm. to one of your videos there a few days ago, and uh, uh, the, the the title of it was, and I thought it was a great title. Uh, let's stop the soulmate bull. Beep 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 beep. This is mm -hmm. a clean show, so I don't want to curse, <laughs> but let's stop the 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 soulmate bull. Uh, what yeah. uh, what do you mean by that, Barry? Because because uh, I think I think the ladies. Uh, they they like that fantasy of there's a soulmate. There's one person out there with with their name on it. What do you have to right. say about and, that? Okay, well, as I said, I I believe in a um, what I would call God or spirit, and I believe that the God, the spirit I I follow, is a kind and benevolent one. And with that being the case, I don't think God would be that cruel as to give me one soulmate and understand seven billion people. Oh gosh, that's brilliant, Barry. I, I, that is. Br <laughs> I'm going to write that down. That is brilliant. Go on, Barry. I mean, Sorry, yeah. in the punitive God, we might believe that, but the yeah. truth is that soulmate, and, and the other part also, because again, the belief I have about God and spirit is more like the force in Star Wars. Of course, I would think about Star Wars. Is that the fact is God is in everything and everyone, and also because we come from that place, we are all connected. So that unique soulmate thing. I, I believe, in, and actually from my own experience, because I've actually crossed paths with more than one soulmate, so I know it's true. Mm -hmm. I've, and most people have without realizing it. You may look back and go, there were certain connections you had, and it may have been a romantic one. It may have been a person in the street, could be a, a person you met at work, where you just had this incredible connection knowing the truth about them, and they knew about you. That's a soulmate connection. But the reason why I'm saying it that way is because we have multiple soulmates. Sure. Plus, plus Barry, I mean, if it's a soulmate thing, boy, that's a lot of pressure on the guy. Or the yep. girl, right? Absolutely. There's one out of eight billion, and you better get this one right. <laughs> oh, yeah, because we're now human going, I've oh, got to be perfect, it's got to be perfect, got to be perfect. That's yeah. the last thing we will be. So so, so we're going to call BS on the soulmate thing, Barry? Mm-hmm. What, what, what else would you call BS on, Barry, now that we're, we're, we're having this in-depth Irish-English, <laughs> very... Uh, 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 what should you say? Life-changing conversation. What... Um, what else would you call BS on Barry in terms of, of relationship? These things that that and, and well, let's talk about the ladies because I want to dedicate the show to the ladies today. Right, they're tired of hearing all well, about the men stuff. So, what what would you say <laughs> is BS in terms of what the ladies bring to the table when you're when you're when you're talking with them? Um, never think that you have to take second place to the man. That well, that's a fundamental piece. Say that. Also, say that not, again, Barry. Say that again. <laughs> never think you have to take second place to the men. You're not the little lady. Yeah. And that's the programming thing from millennia. And again, this is true in the sense that you're not more than, better than men. You're equal to them. That's the key thing. Equal but different. That's the whole thing we've been talking about over the last, when the news, the media for the last couple of years, especially recently with the Golden Globes and what's happening with that, is women are starting to clean their space and take up what is rightfully their own space to say, enough, we can't, we're not doing this anymore. And that's great. At the same time, is understanding our differences make us unique. And so the, 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 the bull hockey um, we talk about relationships is that it's going to be piece of cake, it's easy, you meet somebody, you're good. 
The challenge also of that paradigm, and again, back to the men for a second, though, is because we are goal-oriented as masculine beings, when we get to the relationship, we tend to give up, which is a bad habit we fall into. So women in the feminine uh, see the relationship as a journey, an exploration, a discovery, a place to go and to grow together. And we men, to join in the journey, we need almost as a requirement to have what I would call milestones in that journey. You know, it's like women focus on, like, let's smell the roses on the journey. The men are about, let's get to the goal, let's get to the goal, because that's the wiring we have. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And so knowing that we are not the same, like, we may have common values and maybe some similar likes about sci-fi or the color green or certain things that we like in common, but that's just where we meet. We're not the same. And honoring the differences is what makes us work so well together. Mm. Well, now, Barry, your question. Yeah, absolutely. Barry, talk to me, because we, 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 we've been talking about the polarities in terms of, you know, when a woman steps more into her, her, her masculine. What would you say to the ladies out there, Barry, who are struggling? They're not in their, they're not in their masculine, but they're struggling just to, to step into more of their uh, femininity, their, their mm -hmm. feminine vibration, their femi feminine energy. Well, what do you what do you say to those ladies? Um, don't be Confidence scared. is a part of that too, Barry. I mean, because yeah. women women and men both struggle with with, with self confidence. Yes, there is, and one of the biggest gifts that I'm learning for myself, having done this work for a bunch of years now, is for the masculine. It's for us to truly tr tr step into the masculine art, which is not the same as being the macho. For men, we have to learn that one. For women, it's recognizing that being the feminine is not a weak place; it's a powerful place. As I mentioned, the river and the river banks, the feminine power is so great that some women are scared to embrace it because they don't think they're deserving of it, or they feel that that's not right because women shouldn't be that strong. Well, the truth is, women, when you own your feminine, you can change the planet. So I highly recommend you seek ways to discover it, find goddess circles or women you can hang out with who do this work. I help women with that too, and I have a lot of friends who I recommend highly to, to coach women to define the feminine more too. My passion, though, is really in my bio talk about how I'm a passionate champion for the divine feminine. I've seen what the power of the feminine is, and it changed my life. Mm -hmm. And I will always be in honor and service and in respect of that powerful energy that is what's needed to heal the planet. What do you, what do you say to all the ladies out there, Barry, that, that, that may not want to, uh, you know, take a workshop or hire a coach? They just they want to explore that on their own. What, what are some things that they could do for themselves there? Um, okay, boy, <laughs> I've run a book on this one alone. Um, <laughs> I would say, first of all, the ladies out there is please remember to love yourself. One of the biggest mistakes people make, period, men and women, if you don't love ourselves first, we'll love ourselves second. Mm. And if you if women have been in a relationship for 20 years with three kids, you've got to take at least five minutes a day and look in the mirror and tell yourself you love yourself because it's what's going to keep your sanity and your balance in life working. If you want to do stuff on the feminine level for women, um, I would see... I'm not sure I can actually say that women want to get on their own as much as it is women in conversation because for most women to be in the feminine, they either need to be other women who are in the feminine or be around men who are in the masculine to feel the difference. The feminine energy is so vivacious and so full of life and so magnificent that for many women they have only glimpsed on it and there's only seen moments of it and part of it is <laughs> here we go part of it is not only to love themselves but to see themselves as beautiful and it's not beauty in the um, clairol or the Revlon commercial look of beauty it's innate beauty of being the feminine and every woman has it when she chooses to be the feminine but it's something they, always, they often forget so remembering your beauty remembering your love are a good place to start. Mm. Mm. Barry, talk to me about um, uh, uh, one of your, and I love the title again, um, Still Single, Here Is Why. So we could shift it a little bit to all, for all the single <laughs> women out there. Why yes. Why are women, why Why is it, like, uh, I have to laugh because, you know, in, in I, I don't know that there, I know in Russia, Barry, there's nine million more women than men. So I get why okay. there could be a few single women there. Uh, uh, the opposite is true. Ladies, by the way, I, I read this. Uh, it's true. By 2020 in China, 
the China will have 30 to 40 million men who are looking for a wife. Just wow. just throwing it out there in case. But Barry, talk to me about uh, why 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 would a lovely uh, a lovely lady be single? Um, for like a, an extended period appealing. of time, you know. Well, the biggest reason for that often is well, there's two things come up to mind right away. One of which is they're so focused on their work they haven't got time for a relationship. Which oftentimes is why it is actually caused cool because the second point, which is many women, they've been hurt so badly in past relationships they're scared to go back into one again. Mm. So for a lot of women, they'll either tough it out and be single, or will just date on the surface, not willing to go deep, or they'll commit to their passion, their work, and ignore relationships because they're going to focus on their work instead. And it's the wounding inside for most women that has come from their past relationships, or again, or even as far back as their upbringing, their family life. That is in the way of them having a truly fulfilling, healthy, and whole relationship. Yeah, and that's where that work, com- I think, is very valuable, Barry, where they feel, oh, you know, somebody like me, you know, can't have a great relation. Somebody like me is not really deserving. Somebody like me, blah, 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 fill in the blanks. Um, right, and that's, that's the lies that told to you. Yeah. Yeah, and that's yeah. now. What about this, Barry? I, I find this. I find this sad. I have to say, um, I'm going to drop the hammer here a little bit because I, I, I find <laughs> this very sad, Barry. That that in our society, um, we have this. You know, this this. We have all these um, apps and things. The single apps for this, that, and the other. I mean, I haven't. I don't know much yeah. about it, but I. But I, I've heard the stories. And women going out there and, 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 and using these apps and using these dating sites and these horrific stories of, of all this nonsense and crap that's going on. Mm-hmm. What, uh, what would you suggest, Barry, uh, uh, for women if they, if they want to get back on the dating scene instead of going through, you know, a hundred pictures of guys that, that, that maybe the story's true, maybe it's not, and then they meet them and it's, you know, a horror story, whatever. Not always. Right. I'm not saying always. Right. But, um, what would you say is a better way of dating for single women, Barry? Um, the simplest thing I would say is you've got to start with your vision, meaning that the dating apps, dating sites, matchmakers, meetup groups, all those things, Facebook even is a dating arena in a way. That's the tool once you've got your clarity of vision first. And for women, one of the things that's different between masculine and feminine as I mentioned, that men, we're goal seekers. We go for the goal. We've got to get achieve and we want to get what we want. The feminine's gift is the ability to attract what she wants. It's an innate gift women never always had, but most women don't even know they have it or they forget about it. So the first thing is for women to get what they really want is to get clear on the vision, the intention, what it is you want to attract. Mm. In my programs, in my coaching, there's a large part of the work I do. In fact, I've got an online program called Attract the Man You Want because it's for women to attract the man they want. I mean, it's kind of obvious title. But the real the reality is for women is that to go on the dating app without knowing what you want is like getting in the car and just driving down the road without any clarity where you're going. It doesn't get you where you want to go. Having a plan, a vision, intention before you start, as in what, you, what sort of relationship you want to have, what sort of partnership you want to have, how do you want to be treated, how do you want to love, how do you want to be loved, all these different components. When you know what that is, first of all, you'll know better to look out there and see what you're looking for. Secondly, you've started creating a magnetic pull to that vision that you're attracting and you'll attract somebody in that will fit that requirement. So it starts with the work inside about getting clear about your own vision, your intention, and then you go on the dating apps if you really want to, although I recommend other resources much better because part of the gift of being in the feminine is your sensitivity can tell very quickly if the man you're contacting, reaching out to, talking to, aligns with your vision or not, and you can walk away and it doesn't match. Hmm. So, 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 you know, Wanting to attract the man you want, you, you've got to become the woman that you love first. Yes. And, right. and then, so that, that's where the work comes in, Barry. It's hand in hand, both of those, yeah. Yeah. What are some questions that, that, that the ladies could ask themselves, Barry, in terms of creating a vision for themselves? What, what are some questions they would ask themselves there? Um, right up front, the first thing I'd ask is, what don't I want? Because most women can more easily access a list of the 1,700 things that happen in the past relationship, they do not, do not want to repeat. Yeah. They start with that first. They build a list of the things they don't want, the red flags, as it were. They build that list out first, and then they go ahead and write down the positive reframe or the opposite of what they wrote. So, for example, if a man was a workaholic and never showed up for them, 
they can actually reverse it and say, what I want is a man who's attentive and can find time for me and make it that sort of thing. So you basically build a list of all things that don't work. It's actually the first part of my program. And you build those things you do want that then you can build your vision from. But starting what you don't want is much easier and closer to the surface of the mind so women can reasonably access the things that don't work for them because they've been there before. Mm. Beautiful. Beautiful. Barry, we have about five minutes on the show uh, left, and we still... Wow. I, I okay. want to... Uh, yeah, I know. We could talk all day. Um, <laughs> it... Uh, um, we want to do three little, three little big questions. There are three questions that mm. I ask all my, all my guests. But before I do, mm-hmm. Barry, take a yeah. moment and, uh, just kind of take everything that we've talked about today, Barry, and, yeah. and encapsulate it in what do you want, what do you want the women, what do you want the ladies out there, uh, to know just from everything we've spoke what are what's what's a couple of things that are most important that you want the ladies to hear in our in our interview today i would say two things is that one ladies you deserve what you really want secondly we need you and your feminine more than ever the planet is suffering without your feminine so please find it discover it own it claim it and live it for all our sakes that's two <laughs> All right. Uh, so, Barry, three little questions, three little big questions. Here we go. Our, 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 our guest today is Barry Selby, and if you want to hear, hear more or find out more about Barry, you can go to Barry Selby, S-E-L-B-Y dot com. Uh, all right, three little questions, Barry. Here we go. Number one, Barry, if you had magical powers, what's one thing that you would change in the world? <sighs> I would have every person live authentically, living from their truth, their honesty, and their heart. Number two, if you uh, if you had to get a T-shirt, Barry, with the meaning of life on the front, and you had to wear that T-shirt for the rest of your life, what, <laughs> what would be what would be the quote on the front of the T-shirt for you? Um. Wow, that's an interesting question. Um, I'd say the, the quickest thing that comes to mind is um, love heals all. Love heals all. And number three, Barry, you've had a great life when you get up to the pearly gates and uh, the, the, the divine feminine god or goddess is, uh, is waiting up there for you. <laughs> uh, what do you want her to say to you? Thank you for all the good you've done mm. and for the life you changed. Mm. Well, from the divine feminine upstairs, Barry, to the Irishman downstairs, we want to thank <laughs> you so much for uh, for coming on the show today. We really, uh, really appreciated your time and your energy. Now, do I have uh, – share – what do you got going on, Barry, that the, you can uh, – where, where can we pick up your book and uh, what's the best website to get a hold of you? Well, as you mentioned, my name, my website several times is Barry Selby, which is B-A-R-R-Y-S-E-L-B-Y dot com. On that site, you can see my book is on there. If you look on the, on the book, which is 50 Ways to Love Your Love, you can get it from there, an ebook or physical book. Um, my online programs, I've got a new one I just launched, which is basically called Rock Your 2018 Playbook, which is a way to kickstart the new year because it's the new year already. Um, my Facebook lives that you've talked about the videos you've been watching, I store them on my video blog page. You can see all 220 something I've done so far. They're all 10 minute talks about love, relationships, masculine, feminine, polarity, uh, purpose, mission, things like that too. And you can browse through the titles and find ones that speak to you. Mm. So there's, I wish that's full of good stuff. Barry, thank you so much for your time. Really appreciate you coming on and wish you all the best for the future. Thank you, Dermot. It's been a pleasure to be here. I'm grateful for the invitation. All the best. Cheers now. All right, uh, if you've just joined us, you missed the entire show, but you can go to thecelticcoach.com and uh, pick up a copy uh, of the show. Um, and uh, lots of great interviews in there. You've just joined us. You're listening to the Celtic Coach Radio Show, an Irish talk show for men, where spirituality, science, and self-discovery they all meet together. All right. We will be right back with some more music. Stay tuned. We're here every Friday from 1 to 3, interviews from 1.30 to 2.30 on kows.fm.